Good evening. We'll start this meeting a little differently. Normally we convene the City Council, but since we just uh, finished closed session, which was under the RDA, we'll just start off with the RDA agenda. So I'll um, let our legal counsel report us to if there's anything that happened in closed session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item number one on the redevelopment agency agenda was a conference with legal counsel regarding real property matter. There was a report given, direction given. There's no final action to report at this time. Okay. Um, are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Seeing none. Uh, oral reports and public participation. I know there was an item that was turned in by a, a lady. We will discuss that when we open up the, clo the regular city council agenda. So we'll give you an opportunity to speak at that time. Um, any conflicts of interest? I see none. Uh, then we go right into scheduled items. First items is the minutes of the October 26th Move meeting. W was that a motion? I moved it. Oh, that was a move? Okay. I'll second it. And I guess um, we'll go ahead and vote on that. Do I hear any opposition? Seeing none, so carried. We'll go ahead and uh, are any reports? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and adjourn the RDA and reconvene the regular city council. Okay, the city council is called to order. Madam Clerk, can we have the roll call? Councilman Duper. Present. Councilman Daly. Present. Councilman Brower. Here. Mayor Bertempore Papescu. Here. And Mayor Rigsby. Here. All present. Thank you. We will start with uh, an invocation and pledge of allegiance uh, by your mayor. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to live in this wonderful city. Please help us to make it a better place with our discussions tonight. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Okay, now we come to the oral reports, public participation. I have a request from Darla Stern to speak on an issue. Hello, uh, my name is Darla Stern. I live at 25177 Palm Drive here in Loma Linda. And I am co-chair of the North Central Neighborhood Steering Committee meeting and where we are trying to improve the neighborhood on the north side. Um, this meeting we've been doing for how many years, Betty? Three. No, we've been doing it for a while. Ten, it seems like forever. Forever. I've lived next door to her, I should say, I moved next door to her nine years ago, and she encouraged me to come and join, and I eventually became co-chair with Art Walls. And um, we um, have always met every month until, I guess, the city was having financial problems, so we were going to do meetings every other month. We did not meet for four months in the summer this year, and um, now we want to meet on a regular basis every other month. We met in October. And I, Joanne Heilman, which is um, the secretary for the city manager, has informed me that we will not be meeting in December. And um, Floyd Peterson, since he's no longer here, used to represent us as one of the city council members. So I don't know if someone also from the city council will be there to represent us. I think there's only one of you that live on the north side. I'm the representative on that committee. Councilman Duper lives on the north side. We both do. But okay. he was the official designee uh, okay. to attend that. You're more than welcome to come to our meetings. We would enjoy you. Being. You actually had a meeting approximately just October. about, yeah, in October. I was not able to attend that because of a conflict. But yeah, I was aware of that. So we had one in October, and now you would like to have one in December? We're, we're supposed to. We had it on our calendar as scheduled for December. And Joanne is telling me we should not meet until February because it's redundant. What we're what is going on in the meetings is redundant. It's not redundant. You know, um, Pam kind of tells us some things about 
the building, which is kind of redundant, but that's okay. And JAR clues us in on public works, and then, um, you know, different speakers come if possible. But um, our main focus is to find out what's going on in our neighborhood, um, the crimes that are being committed, what it is that we can do um, to keep things, you know, going. Uh, Wiener Stencil was robbed. In fact, that weekend prior to us meeting, we wouldn't have known about it unless we had met. And so basically, I want to, you know, try and make sure we meet every other month um, and make sure someone from city council, if they are going to be there, I mean, someone to help us out. <laughs> well, let, let, let me respond. Uh, yes, we plan to have a meeting every other month, and, 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 but we can't do it next month. So we said we do it in de December. We're doing it in December. And then you say that you cannot make the December meeting. No, no, no jo sorry, jo Joanne. And Joanne. Joanne said that she can't or didn't want to have the meeting because she said it was redundant and everything just gets repeated. So we want to schedule to the, to January month, and then you said you can't attend. No, the we meeting. schedule every other month. Okay. So we would like to meet in December, especially because of the holidays um, and all of the crime that is committed during that time. It would be good that we at least get together. Um, I, I did go to uh, Art Wall's house tonight, and he couldn't make it, but um, he, he said that, you know, this is something that we do need to meet for. Floyd told me that this is actually um, our, 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 our committee, you know, it's, it's for us. We live here in Loma Linda. We live in the neighborhood. We need to meet. Um, and I know that sometimes Joanne feels that we don't need to meet. Well, she has actually told me that, Jarb, unfortunately. So, and I've been co-chair probably for, what, four years now, so. Um. Yes, we will have a meeting in December, so. Okay. Yeah, I think the, I don't know how much we can talk about non-agendized issues, but it sounds like, to me, what we have to do is, is decide who has the authority to call a meeting for these for these committees is it the committee chair or is it the staff support or who but that that just seems like a g general topic and, and it's on a you know we schedule it for December so she just said let me know most of our other committees it's there's a schedule and the committee chair or co-chair decides whether we should have one or not now in defense to Joanne if there are no items and the committee just meets to get information it may seem as if, well, why do we need to have a meeting if all we're doing is getting information? And it sounds to me like, regardless, you would like to make sure we meet every other month. Yeah. Okay. And, and Public Works, you know, Jarb, thank goodness, he's Public Works and City Manager now, but he still comes. He still informs us of what goes on, and Pam, the same. You know, um, we used to have someone from code enforcement come, and they no longer do. Um, it would be nice to have someone from code enforcement because that way we can let code enforcement know what's going on. No, perhaps you might be able to help you with this because I have never attended any of your meetings. Um, how many citizens sit on this committee? Um, well, there's two co-chairs and then there's probably, I would say, what, eight to ten? Okay, and do you always have a quorum? Uh, well, there's not necessarily, we don't have a meet. it's not like that, it's one that's... So it's only like three or four people showing up? Not necessarily. And okay. I've, and I've even, Joanne has provided me with flyers where I go out and I go door to door trying to encourage people in our neighborhood okay. to come to these meetings, and I have. Um, in fact, I was going to ask Joanne for some. Because in defense of staff, if we have committee meetings in which we only have one or two people showing up and we're paying staff to show up, it does become an issue. Oh, yes. And I think that's what they're probably concerned with. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we pretty much understood where you're coming from and we'll try to take steps to yeah. and I'm, address and it. I was willing to go out again and, you know, get more people. And so. Just, just for clarification, Mr. Mayor and mm -hmm. Councilman, uh, I understand this committee is a, a community organization. It's not a city organization or committee we do not appoint these committee members no it's an informal committee that was established years ago when we were contemplating various developments and improvements in that north central neighborhood and so we brought the community together we, we began meeting actually at their homes in their front yards uh, when Charles Jumetta was on the board and then it gradually progressed to our community room so it varies as to how many community members actually attend well, but it's not a formal committee with 
um, where they vote on anything. It's it's an information gathering for the north for the members of the North Central um, community. So my my point of that is that this is not a formal city appointed committee that is subject to the Brown Act rules and so forth. The city staff help, may help facilitate it on an informal basis, provide reports and information and, and attend uh, when they're able. But in theory, the committee can meet on their own at any time they please, uh, whether or not city staff can be there. Um, if we convert them into a more formal city appointed body, then we have to follow certain other rules. And I think we probably would not want to go that, to that extent. And, and just to let you know, um, three years ago, Art Walls did um, request that of the committee, and we decided not to take that avenue. Because we don't want to put any more, um, you know, the, I think the city has enough to do, you know, and, and Jarb, as public works, he doesn't always have to be there. Pam, she isn't always there either. Um, so it's not something that they have to be at, but we do like to have at least the sheriff's department. Sylvia Beasley does come, and um, we do have speakers there that informs us about what's going on. In fact, I think last time we had someone from the fire department um, that was telling us about the the earthquake emergency stuff, informing us, and so it's just it's basically just to, to keep things you know aware in our neighborhood and and the crimes and. It's also about that. So, yeah, I think if if you went with a more if we went with a more formal committee, then you would also be required if you sat on the committee mm -hmm. to attend. Um, and and like the attorney says, there are different rules yeah. as far we, as we don't want, we don't want things to go like there. that. So maybe maybe <laughs> committee is kind of a strong word. Maybe it's more of an an advisory citizens advisory meeting or something like that. And then again. Um, you know, it, getting staff and, and uh, people to show up every time, no, whether or not they have information to part, you know, to to impart or not. Um, I'm wondering if that's something that can be handled with Sylvia Beasley on a regular basis through the sheriff's department as kind of like a like an almost like a neighborhood watch or community information meeting or something like that, maybe shared with the fire service. Because it sounds like that's what you're more interested in and mm -hmm. is what's going on as far as the crimes and things like that. Maybe not so much whether or not JARP's putting in a new right. sewer system. <laughs> but, you know, I could be wrong. But that sounds like what you're, what you're looking for. So maybe that's something that staff can discuss and figure out. Maybe it's just a retooling of what you guys want to do, and then you can meet on your own and yeah, invite and actually, whoever you want and not have to go through um, the city for that. A year and a half ago when the new uh, fire station you know was put down there my ideal was let's start having it down there you know and it, they're at the fire station and then we don't have to worry about having the community room and having the different things and that wasn't an option Joanne said that um, you know she I guess she talked to one of the fire chiefs and it wasn't safe to meet in the the, yeah, the I only don't place think to meet down there is there, in the where they have the trucks so yeah I can assume that staff's going to, you guys, you'll take care of this. And it, it sounds like it's just maybe a okay. miscommunication, but I think you'll get taken care of. And then also I can act as an alternate too if if uh, Councilman Popescu can't make a meeting or not saying we can come every time. Yeah, but, but come, you know, if, if you want, find out what's I'd going like on, you know. Okay. Always a good idea. We Thanks. invite anyone over there that lives there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Just from my own clarification, when are the meetings? Who from city council's planning to participate? So, Obi, Obi's the designee, and I, I guess there's no formal notice of the meeting since it's it, not a formal. It, it actually is something that's mailed um, to everyone that's on the, the committee. Um, what, so what committee? It's the North Central Neighborhood Steering Committee meeting. And, and, and Councilman Pepescu on that uh, mailing yes, list? Yes, and I was notified of the meeting, which was in October. Yeah, and Floyd was the person before he, you know, had resigned. So, and it would be nice maybe if Phil gets his address in there so that way he can be noted. It's every other month, um, and then we're, we don't meet in the summer. We'll, we'll take a four-month, hopefully, a recession in the, the summer term. Is that the, the good idea? That's what we did this last you summer. You can do it any way you like. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Okay, is there anyone else who has any comments on items not on the agenda? Okay, I don't see any, so we'll move on. Item number one, we have a presentation on hazardous mitigation plan update. 
fire department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Emergency Services Coordinator Deborah Kresge has a presentation on this. Uh, I guess the biggest point to remember at this point, this is a presentation on a status, an update to a process that is uh, currently happening and an opportunity as required by that process for your review and also public input to, to the plan. Uh, after it is submitted to the county, then to FEMA, it will be brought back to you uh, for a formal, formal action. So there is no required action other than uh, review and input tonight. All right, Mayor and Council, thank you for having me up here. And uh, as Chief Bender had mentioned that this is just for your review. So what you have in your packet is a draft version, very draft version. Um, I do have some copies with a couple plans in it. If you would like one of those, I have a hard copy for you tonight. But tonight, I just have a couple slides to show you, the, um, very generalized um, uh, to go over a couple items in the plan. And at the end, if you've got questions, I'd, I'd, I will uh, try to uh, answer those. Um, just in a nutshell, the hazard mitigation plan uh, identifies hazards and mitigation actions that we are going to do to reduce those hazards. FEMA emphasizes that the hazard mitigation plan should be what uh, what needs to be done rather than how it should be done. So it's, uh, they're not looking for a lot of detail, they're looking for uh, generalized information. Uh, the plan is required for federal assistance programs such as the hazard mitigation grant program and the pre-disaster mitigation program. And I, I also put Assembly Bill uh, 2140 up here because in this bill, um, well, following a large disaster, um, if there is an emergency proclamation, then we um, have a opportunity to get some um, uh, funding back, uh, whatever the damage was. And the federal government, FEMA, they will pay, um, they may pay 75%. Well, the remaining 25% may be paid by the state. If we have a hazard mitigation plan, there could be a higher percentage of that 25% that the state will pay back. And so they are really pushing on local jurisdictions having um, these hazard mitigation plans. Uh, hazard mitigation plans are required to be updated every five years. Um, the city's plan was last updated in 2005, and so we are due right now to, to update our plan. Um, in the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000, it encourages that uh, local jurisdictions participate in a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. And in 2005, we did partner with the County of San Bernardino um, in the hazard mitigation, in the multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. There were 56 partners, and we're doing it again once again this year, and there are 54 partners, and that includes all 24 cities and towns and the county, and then uh, special districts as well. Uh, we, in the city, here we have a planning team that we talk about um, the next steps on uh, moving forward with this plan. Uh, and the, this group is also doing a review of this plan, just like all of you are welcome to also. And we have um, members in here from the um, uh, city personnel. We have um, a representative from Loma Linda Academy, as well as the Loma Linda University and the Medical Center. In the plan, um, just a, a few things in the plan here. One of the things that we identify are the hazards, and we went ahead and, and used the list of hazards that were in the 2009 general plan, and which was earthquake, wildfires, the floods, hazardous, hazardous waste, slope failure, um, airplane crashes, railroad accidents and terrorism. Uh, the top three, the earthquake, wildfires, and floods, those are our top hazards that we focused on in this plan. And when trying to identify and put that plan into a list to prioritize those hazards, um, it's, it's hard to pinpoint which is worse than others because it depends on the incident. You can have a huge incident and um, then other ones can be much more minor depending on, on all of them. But in general, what we did, we looked at the probability of a hazard happening and then the impact it could have on the city. 
and looking at those two and ranking them, we came up with the earthquake, wildfires, and floods as the top three, as you can see there. And this chart here is what a lot of the cities and towns are using in the plan this year. Um, a couple of the projects, well, the projects that we have listed um, are um, the Anderson Bridge seismic retrofit, which is proposed. And I should mention that if there are proposed um, hazard um, uh, projects, then those need to be listed in this plan as well. So the Anderson Bridge seismic re retrofit, Loma Linda University Medical Center's seismic retrofit project, it's hard to say so many times. Um, the Urban Wildland Interface Hillside Weed Abatement Program and the Zanke um, Channel Improvement, which is proposed also. And uh, um, I've got to say, as we kind of looked at um, the state of the city, where things were in the mitigation projects that we've done in the past, the city is in really good shape and they've done quite a bit already in the past. So. Um, though we don't have a massive list, it's because we've already done quite a bit already in the city. Uh, the timeline for this plan, um, tonight was the first time we're putting it out to the public and um, to all of you for, um, to let everyone know this is here if they would like to review it. Um, we will be distributing it um, between now and the 16th to um, our, some of our volunteer groups such as the CERT and RACES. And uh, on the 17th, we will be going to the Planning Commission meeting and just giving them a briefing, just like we did, we are doing tonight. And um, then on the 24th, I am hoping to get all um, information back, comments back from everyone, and we will review those comments and um, possibly um, um, put them, update the hazard mitigation plan with those comments. And then um, by the 2nd, we need to submit the hazard mitigation plan to County OES, the County Office of Emergency Services, and then they will send it up to Cal EMA, California Emergency Management Agency, who will then review it there, and then it goes up to FEMA for final review. And then at that time, they will let us know, yay or nay, we'll make our updates as needed, and um, then it will come back down. We'll bring it back to Council at that time and for um, approval. Um, we will have this plan available at the fire department if anyone is interested to come and review it. We will have a copy there and um, there will be a sheet of paper that people can make comments on um, if they wanted to do that. And so um, that's it. If there are any questions about this plan. Just a quick question to help. Uh, some of us understand the process of recovering costs with some of these incidents. Um, so we have a, um, a, a flood or a fire, we just total up the amount of damages, and then you would automatically file with uh, FEMA and some state organization at that point, or help me understand the nuts and bolts of that. Well, an example is back in January, February, um, we had some storms in, this, in the county. If you remember, there was um, in, in town here, we had a lot of, we had some downed trees, we had some damage to some of our... Um, um, yeah, it's a storm drain damage? system at, um, a ca uh, at um, Van Leuven mm -hmm. and Orange Grove, that little corner there, it's always have a water filling up that location. So we did have some damage at this, at this particular, during this storm period. And when the county, they were getting damage as well, and so, so were other cities. Well, when the county will look at their damage in the unincorporated areas, as well as the damage going on in other cities, they will send out, in, uh, they send out a, a document that says, do you have damage? How much estimated damage do you have? So they gather all of that damage up, take a look at it. If it's large enough, like, during this time, if it's large enough, then they will do an emergency proclamation at that time. And then they will submit this, all these numbers, pile them all up and send them up to FEMA and say, we've got this, uh, we have all this damage. Um, that was also during the snowstorms up in Big Bear, if you remember that. So that, that's where a big part of the damage was also. But everything was sent up and they looked at that and they said, okay, this is large. It, 
in a nutshell, I'm really generalizing this, and they said, okay, then we are, because of its size in the county, we are going to do some reimbursement to these jurisdictions um, on these projects. And so they, um, um, they gave us 75%, um, FEMA did, and the state gave us a, um, uh, the other 25%. They covered the other 25%. So the damages that we submitted, the, it was around 20,000, I believe, right around there between 19 and 20,000 in our city. So the numbers that we sent up to them, they were able to reimburse us at this time. So at least that process will be in place that you'll carry that forward oh, if yes. and when we have the next incident yes. and we don't have to rely on the state to uh, declare it a disaster area or something like that for no. funding. That's one of the I pet peeves, uh, and I think a lot of citizens pet peeves that, you know, as individuals, you can't get loans uh, unless your county's designated and you can live just over a, a arbitrary county line yeah. and not be eligible, but I'm glad to hear that this that, is, is not that same situation. That's right, and there are some fine lines and some gray areas, and so you've got to do what you can with the information that you have so that you can get some reimbursement and help to fix some Thank of the you. I'd like to okay. go ahead, Chair. This also pay for the staff time, over time, when they had to come out to the incident and, and, and remove the debris and so forth. So it's very, very nice reimbursement. I, I had an opportunity to sit down with the, with the fire department a couple of weeks ago, and, and we talked about this and our plan and where we're going. And I, and I have some experience and understanding um, of how this works and I know that um, from seeing what what our department is doing and where we're going we're going to be far ahead of a lot of other cities and a lot of other places here especially in the state um, FEMA does have um, a, a kind of a strict set of guidelines and we are definitely getting compliant and far more than probably a lot of other places so I'm actually very proud of our fire department and very proud of the work that um, you guys are doing I mean it's 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 very important and believe me when it comes down to getting the money and stuff from the feds and the state they do especially given the significance of the incident they will look at our plan and, and evaluate how well we've you know prepared for things so anyway that's my comment yeah, no, thank you I thank you i have to give deborah a lot of the credit for that certainly that storm example uh, historically that would have probably just been work we did as part of every day's work and it uh, certainly an addition of Deborah to our community has brought shed some light on the opportunities there to actually get reimbursed for those things that we historically would have just hey that's all in a day's work and that's what it takes to run the town so we appreciate uh, what you've brought to our community. thank you so yes thank you. It, and Deborah and I also talked about there will be eventually probably some time when we'll need to do some training and things like that too as a council and staff and things like that but she was very on top of it again very impressive right in December actually we are going to be talking about um, the kind of the state of um, disaster preparedness in the in the city here. So uh, we'll probably be doing a workshop and let you know um, kind of where things are and where we're going this next year. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll move to our consent calendar. Is there any item anybody wants to pull or? Go ahead. Just had a question on item number four. Um, I noticed that we're approving the uh, to award the contract for the rehab of the 100,000 gallon uh, and the 3.2 million gallon and the $8 million gallon reservoirs. Um, and there's a contingency of 10%. If we go beyond the 10, per, if we go beyond the actual contract, would we be advised of that with a amendment or a change to the original contract or is, is it automatically that you're willing to pay the other 10 percent no a lot of time is is i will come back to the city council if it go over the contingency that the city council was approved okay so you only come up to us if it goes over the contingency correct but you can do it on your own if it does go beyond it correct as long as it's, okay correct yeah i think the point of contingencies is that it, it gives spending discretion Okay, is there a motion on the consent calendar? I move it. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Any opposition? Okay, hearing none, it's approved. We'll go to old business. We have item number five, Council Bill 0-2010-02. This is a second reading and roll call. 
amending and adapting the building code, multiple components to that. Do we just move it? Okay, I'll move Council Bill 02010-02 for second reading. Second. And does the motion also include waiving formal reading, reading by number only? Title. Yes, and I'll make the motion that we waive the formal reading and read by, reading by number only. The second covers that. Okay. So we can go with the roll call. Okay, I'll read it by title. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Loma Linda adopting and amending the 2010 edition of the California Building Code, including Appendix Chapter 1, Appendix Chapter I, Appendix Chapter J, the 2010 California Residential Code, 2010 California Green Building Standards Code, 2010 Electrical Code, 2010 California Plumbing Code, 2010 California Mechanical Code, and 2010 International Property Maintenance Code, and repealing chapters 15.08, 15.10, 15.12, 15.16, 15.17, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.50, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89, 15.90, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, 15.94, 15.95, 15.96, 15.97, 15.98, 15.99, 15.10, 15.11, 15.12, 15.13, 15.14, 15.15, 15.16, 15.17, 15.18, 15.19, 15.20, 15.21, 15.22, 15.23, 15.24, 15.25, 15.26, 15.27, 15.28, 15.29, 15.30, 15.31, 15.32, 15.33, 15.34, 15.35, 15.36, 15.37, 15.38, 15.39, 15.40, 15.41, 15.42, 15.43, 15.44, 15.45, 15.46, 15.47, 15.48, 15.49, 15.51, 15.52, 15.53, 15.54, 15.55, 15.56, 15.57, 15.58, 15.59, 15.60, 15.61, 15.62, 15.63, 15.64, 15.65, 15.66, 15.67, 15.68, 15.69, 15.70, 15.71, 15.72, 15.73, 15.74, 15.75, 15.76, 15.77, 15.78, 15.79, 15.80, 15.81, 15.82, 15.83, 15.84, 15.85, 15.86, 15.87, 15.88, 15.89
Now we'll move to new business. We have Council Bill R-2010-40, establishing bail amounts for parking citations. There's some state mandate, mandated changes for court facilities and repealing resolution number 1755. The fire department has an update. Yes, sir. Um, as many know, some may not, that parking enforcement uh, in our city rests with the fire department and in our community safety division uh, as an introduction uh, it's been s roughly 17 years since we've made any modification to the, the bail schedule. Uh, since that time, a number of legislative changes, uh, making assessments on each citation, and uh, our fire marshal has an, a more detailed update uh, on those assessments and uh, the recommendations for the updated bail schedule. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Glad to be back. Um, as the Chief indicated uh, this evening, I'd like to uh, present to you the Council Bill R-2010-40 and the accompanying resolution that goes along with it. Um, if you're already familiar with it all, I can just answer any specific questions, but if you'd like, I can give you a brief overview of how we got where we are today from the beginning of our program. I have done. And I'll do I'm not asking for that. I just had a question. So go ahead and ask the question. Um, on the exhibit A, where you have the bail, and then the second row is DEL bail, is that delinquent bail? Yes, sir. Okay, just want to clarify that. Thank you. I think probably an overview would be nice for the Channel 3 uh, people with insomnia. Uh, essentially, um, as we all know, the best way that I know how to explain it, that I can easily understand it, is on a daily, virtually on a daily basis, we try to push 50 pounds of cars into a five pound box and we have a definite traffic control problem. Um, I, I should emphasize from the very beginning that our, the traffic control, our traffic control program was never intended nor is it a revenue generating program. It's, it's, it's designed to control uh, equitably and fairly the number of cars that we get in the city each day. Essentially in 1980 is when our program started the initial bail schedules, and I'll just give you a reference of our, our typical typical uh, ticket or citation, which is overtime parking or in a, in, a, in a zone that they shouldn't be in for too long. In 1980, that uh, fee schedule was established, and that the fee for that particular citation was $25. Um, the state, uh, very quickly after that, assessed a $5 charge uh, to allow for building of prisons and courts in the state, and in uh, in response to that, uh, they had a resolution, the city council back then in 1981 readjusted, and, in the, and then ultimately in 1993, the last change of the bail schedule that was changed to our current $30 that we have today for a basic uh, citation. Since then, um, we have, the state has through uh, state bills 1407 and state bill, or Senate bill 857, they have, uh, the state has added a $4.50 charge, and this is for each citation a $4.50 charge, and again, December of this year, a $3 charge. So up until tonight, when I hope you will pass this resolution, the, the city has had to pay the state uh, $7.50 out of that $30 citation, um, as well as the, co the, the cost of the program administrator, the, the folks that we contract with, the cities that we contract with, to manage that program, the, those fees have gone up incrementally over the years. So what we're asking on this bail schedule is essentially to to make the playing field more even again, where it, where it was initially intended to be, to rail, basically across the board raise the bail the bail schedule by ten dollars, um, um, and, and I lost my train of thought there. But essentially, the ten dollars will recoup that, um, and in the, along the line of um, that program is not a uh, revenue generator. By by passing this resolution tonight. Our, our figures show that we will still be only re re recovering 80% of the cost of the program to run as it is now. If we don't pass it, our, our um, data indicates that we'll be covering our current program roughly 67%. Okay, so this is clearly no attempt to make revenue. No, sir. And we're nowhere near the red light uh, running ticket levels of $470. Or less than one tenth. So it's a bargain. You want to violate something in Loma Linda, do it on parking, not on red lights. 
Well, until December 1st, and after that, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just curious, um, why did we decide to go for the, I'm sorry, I forgot, the percent you mentioned instead of getting to 100%, uh, you know, I guess from looking at it from the quotes law-abiding citizen viewpoint, uh, they'd say, well, why don't we make the person that had the violation pay for the entire cost? In essence, I'm going to be subsidizing it. If I'm the one that doesn't get a violation, why not make it recover all the costs? Uh, I can address that in two ways. One, the chief has the actual numbers that he can, he can give you and that can kind of explain the number part of it. But what we, what we did uh, to, to see where we were in comparison to our sister cities, we did a survey, and I, and I can give you that survey that just shows where we line up with San Bernardino, uh, Fontana, Redlands, Colton, and they are, some of them, for the most part, are ahead of us on our bail. Um, and by readjusting where we are after tonight, if we readjust the, the, the bail schedule, we will still be in that average, if you will. So, in, in answer to your question, we felt like the certainly in overtime or permit parking, that $10 jump still kept us within perhaps an industry standard of our region. Um, it's probably not the best answer versus, versus uh, the, lesson, the lesson to be learned here is don't illegally park in Fontana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we could all argue and have slightly different thoughts on it. Again, my inclination Personally, would uh, I don't want to support people that get tickets, and if I am the one that violates something, I should have to pay. But anyway, it's uh, uh, I'm not sure it's worth rehashing all these figures. But the next time we uh, adjust these, uh, that's my uh, general opinion. And one other, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the other ways to recoup the money is to go out and basically enforce more diligently or, or spend more time. But I think right now our uh, enforcement personnel are doing other community service type things as well and not just out there 24 hours a day writing uh, the one, parking the one, tickets. The one uh, traffic officer that we have, she, she works a four-day week. Um, so essentially Friday is fair game, if you will. Um, <laughs> There's a random day per week. Random day. <laughs> happens uh, for, but yes yeah, she's I mean she's on the road uh, diligently as long as she can be out there and you know I mean if we get in an ideal world yeah I wish you there would be a whole lot more <laughs> tickets written there, there, to some it. degree it's also trying to make sure we're representing a tone a tone of the council and and how enforcement is applied I think we it's been making sure we get compliance in the residential parking zones and the time parking zones and I don't know that we're trying to go find any little infraction in the community and cite people. That we, we haven't ever been given direct that kind of tone from our council and our community. So that right. plays. Yeah, and don't misconstrue my comments to be direct. Yeah, yeah right. I, I would say that I, we still represent that tone today. And unless there's a shift, and I don't believe there is, um, well, that's how we serve the community. I'll tell you, I think uh, by far, Loma Linda tends to be a far more lenient community than a lot of the surrounding communities. and. That's kind of evident by the bail schedule, but by other things too. And um, again, the purpose, like you've said, is not to generate uh, revenue. It's just basically to cover the costs that are involved here. But I will tell you all a, a quick story, if I may, Mr. Mayor, if you'll indulge me. <clears throat> when I was young, brand new, and getting ready to get into law enforcement, I worked for our neighboring city as a parking control officer. And I have never in my career now working for the sheriff's department and going through many crazy, difficult, scary situations. I had more people threaten to do bodily harm to me over a $15 parking ticket than taking them to jail potentially for many years. So it is a very touchy subject, I will say, before we get into it. I, so I would fail. also add, though, that I think between now and, and certainly when the next uh, legislative bill goes into effect in December, if it is the wish of the council for us to be more inclusive of the total cost of operating the program and make the adjustments based on that versus what might be regionally acceptable, we could 
I don't believe it's a lot of work to do that modification and bring it back to the council. So we, uh, we're at the council's pleasure and certainly if you'd like us to take that approach. Question, just for my own clarification. Um, <clears throat> the numbers under the Loma Linda column mm -hmm. are current or proposed? Those are current. Current. Those will across the board. And the proposed would be? $10 higher. Ten dollars above each of these amounts. Yeah, in your package you have the new, the e new. Except for the handicaps, the same. Handicaps stay the same, correct. But in the back page of your packet has the new, what the new resolution will show and the bail schedule, what it will go to. Okay. So it can be noted for the viewing public, as, as the mayor said earlier. <clears throat> for example, uh, one of our sister cities, a handicap parking ticket is five hundred dollars, and we're going to be at two ninety if we. Approve no, this. Well, we. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are staying at 280, but uh, clearly we're not as high as some of the other ones. We're about on average with some of the some, but there are a couple that are higher. Can Can you give me a little background on why we want to increase these fees? Is this to cover our costs of implementation, or for the most part, except for the seven dollars and fifty cents that the state has added on since we went to thirty dollars? So back in 1993 was the last time we adjusted this bail schedule, and that was to accommodate the $5 that the state raised it prior to then. Mm -hmm. So since 1993, we've been operating at $30 a citation. And uh, in 19, I think it says there's Senate bill, or state bill 1407. In 2009, they assessed a $4, another $4.50. And then in December of this year, next month, they'll assess another $3. So this is to anticipate. So this is in response to the state's tax on the local government for parking citations. Per citation, correct. And, and also there's administrative fees that have gone up because there's a separate company, I'm understanding, that administers all this stuff for us. And their fees have gone up since we probably first started doing business. And that's the $2.50 to, to give us the $10 total. So this is only bringing us to a level of balance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much. What remains is the motion in the second. Well, Mr. Mayor, did we want to do we want to move this item or do we want to do we want to table it in and have the another have it brought back with another proposal for the increased fees to get us up? 200%. I am comfortable with moving, moving as, as it is. If someone else wants to come back and raise them again, they're more than happy to, but I'm comfortable with what this person proposed in front of us. You're, so you're moving it? Cause I'll I, I'm going to go ahead and make, make a motion that we pass Council Bill R2010-40. And I second that. Okay. Any discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, it's approved. We have reports of councilmen. Just want to say, please shop in Loma Linda. Eat, buy gas, and buy anything you possibly can in the city of Loma Linda. Apple products. Yes, Apple products. Lots of Apple products at the <laughs> campus bookstore. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to publicly thank the fire department. I uh, came out about a week or so ago, and I did a ride along with them. And uh, it was a great experience. Uh, learned a lot and I had a great time with them they're a very professional organization and uh, I'm very proud of the services they provide here in the city um, so I just want to say that thank you okay reports of uh, officers do you have a response to <laughs> thank you I uh, might also add uh, if anyone was concerned about the column of smoke this last Saturday afternoon uh, we did have a vegetation fire uh, in our city um, held it to about 125 acres um, probably 70 percent of that being in our city uh, outstanding response again I think we saw the value of certainly our our contract for aircraft and bulldozers and uh, I guess the luxury of having those resources available quite uh, locally instead of all over the state this time of year at lots of fires we were able to put a lot of resources quickly and uh, an incident that oftentimes goes all the way to Riverside County was held, uh, held about 125 acres. So it was a good response and attack. And uh, it's often challenging. We bring 
Riverside County, San Bernardino County, and multiple agencies kind of collide right there in uh, it's a triangle we all refer to that can sometime lead to some challenges with communications and it all went off uh, very well. So I was proud of the response and, and certainly the containment of that incident. So we got a little, I, I, little I bit of- I didn't see the smoke. Do, do we know what the origin of the fire was? Uh, we have some ideas that we're pursuing right still. Okay. So we got, got the brush engine dirty? Yes, sir. Good job. <laughs> that was it, that was big enough. It made the news. It was on the news for a little bit, yeah. and uh, yeah. So we beat out L.A. finally. Just and, that, I it, just had a question regarding that fire. Um, the units that responded to it, which is our city units, how did how did they get to it? Did they use Ritchie Canyon Road, or did we actually have to go through some of the roads up through the hills? No, no, we we're, we're forced to go uh, into Colton and then back into Loma Linda. We don't have any roads that go through so yes we go Ritchie Canyon Road okay thank you and then another comment um, you know I, I was watching it go down uh, while I was at work in my other job but uh, <clears throat> also I want to commend the sheriff's department because they brought resources in from other areas not just what we had assigned in our city and again another example of how we get more than more often than what we bargained for so they came in and, and helped out too um, but uh, again proud of my fire department and the sheriff's department we, we I, we did have deputies already uh, positioned in neighborhoods ready to making announcements, ready to move people if it needed to. We were able to hold two ridges uh, and kind of avoided the Scotch and Prado sides of it, which was ideal, but absolutely the deputies were in place. Uh, they were starting to make some announcements and warnings and ready to move people. So uh, a lot of things came together really nicely there. Okay, any other comments from officers? Okay, then we are adjourned. Thank you very much.